everybody welcome back to the daddy knows best channel here to help you be a smart successful man and uh, today we're going to be talking about what happened to this small village from the paul joseph watson show let's jump into what he has to say and i'll be giving you some commentary here and there of course i'd love to hear your comments and thoughts down below so get in that comment section jump in here with me and uh, don't forget to like comment subscribe and all that good stuff if you do find that you enjoy this content here today so let's watch and see what he has to say Imagine you lived in a quaint, quiet village comprising of about 700 residents. Then imagine the government suddenly announced it planned to house 1,500 North African and Middle Eastern migrants right on your doorstep. Oh shit. That's precisely what could be about to happen to the residents of Linton-on-Ouse, a village in North Yorkshire, England. And suffice to say, the locals aren't too happy about it. Like Catherine Dryden, who fears that an influx of bored young men is just asking for trouble. So I hope that y'all understand what he's actually talking about, what's going on here. We, you, you know, you think that, you know, people stop talking about refugees and that we still aren't importing refugees, or maybe we are, we have started importing less of these quote unquote refugees, which are really economic migrants. And even, uh, you know, people who are committing a jihad, these, uh, you think that they have stopped this? No, it, they are importing just as many people as they have in the past, and they have called for and demanded even more immigration. And, in, and they don't care about the consequences and the fallout, even if you are a small, tight-fit, rural community of 1,500 people. It doesn't matter how small your community is. They're literally bringing in, I think, double the population or more into a rural community where they don't have jobs for these young men. Even if they and these people are willing to capitulate, willing to give them jobs, willing to help them, willing to tell them how to live there, their lifestyle, maybe uh, teach them their language and, and, and do everything to help these people. But there's not inf enough infrastructure. Andy's about to tell you that they're building, you know, hotels and apartments for these people on their farmland, their best land. And these people are already struggling. And, it, and if you're not familiar with Europe, it's very hard to get land rights to farm or to do much of anything. So, they, so, they're, so resources are very hard for you to get the rights to farm and produce even your basic food that's around you. And yet they take that land away from you and, and, and they act like you're selfish and these types of people act like there's something wrong with you. Th these aren't rich people. And even if they were rich, the, it's not their responsibility to do these things. But again, they're willing to train, teach, serve, give them cookies, be a good neighbor. You can tell from this in this video we're going to watch that these people are kind. It doesn't matter if you're kind or not. You, as a quote-unquote white person, are, the, are, are terrible. You're a monster, and there's something wrong with you if you aren't giving over of your society and giving over everything to these quote-unquote people. But we're not holding people responsible. But we'll talk, we'll talk more about that as well. People, the, you know, accountability, I mean, we don't talk about that. They, they are going to be bored out of their schools. There is no infrastructure in this village. So again, this person is prob highly likely to be a feminist. Even old feminist uh, uh, talking to you here uh, is, w is worried even if sh they believe in diversity, even if they are a bleeding heart, even if they want to help people and they believe all the leftist things. They know that if there's not job and infrastructure, there's not enough entertainment, there's not enough women for these men to date. And he's going to be talking about it here. Most of these people who are quote unquote refugees are economic migrants. They do not have the same culture. They do not have the same beliefs. They are not required to have your same culture. There's not laws. And in fact, these people are given protections and they are, you know, it, their crimes are ignored or protected. Uh, the violence that they do. And again, these, this is the same place where it's a crime just to look at a woman. They are trying to make laws and have suggested and, rec and, and uh, talked about making laws that if you, if you, you know, stare or have the quote unquote male gaze, if a woman feels uncomfortable for essentially any reason, if you just look at her and she doesn't like you, that can be a crime and they can throw you in jail for that. These are the same people, you know, 
that, that there's this extreme of capitulating to the comforts and the emotions of certain people. You don't talk about character, individual responsibility, you know, people's rights. And that's one reason UK is in such a huge problem. And, and again, I bring this up as an American in the West because there are people who make demands. Before we had uh, Obamacare and universal health care and all this, and they, and they destroyed our health care system, they said that we needed to, be, needed to be more like Europe. They have never criticized or looked at the consequences, and there's pe people in America and other countries who are screaming and still demanding for more refugees. They're telling you directly, politicians are telling you, that you're going to have to live a lesser lifestyle, that you're going to be poorer. And again, I was be raised as a kid and told that I would have to learn Spanish because uh, America would be taken over. And, uh, and uh, you know, I better – it was my responsibility to learn Spanish. It wasn't the responsibility of the people who were immigrants to learn American English or American culture. It was my responsibility as an American to learn their culture and their language and, and to assimilate to them. What is a nation without borders? What is a nation, you know, if we don't even have any type of structure, any type of control? Are, the, are these political leaders with the United Nations uh, have, are, are dumbing down, weakening, and destroying nations so they can build the, the, the new order, which they openly have talked about? And that stuff is no, not a theory. They have talked about it openly in speeches and debates. They have openly told you that the Great Reset is happening and the Great Replacement is happening. And uh, they've openly, publicly talked about these types of things. These are not theories. This is their every intention. We had, we had, we, we had literally, literally French politicians and French political leaders who said that France, France is not for the French people. Essentially saying that France is not a, a, a French nation. Are they going to rename France? I don't know. Maybe uh, soon they'll, they'll rename France to Fr Frankistan or something. But literally, this is the kind of stuff that's going on. But let's continue with this video. We're a very small, tight-knit community. Yes, we will be welcoming them and speak to them. Absolutely not a problem, but that is not enough. What are these people going to do? Exactly. There's no jobs. There's not entertainment. These young men want to date, and they come from a different culture where they don't respect women, and they don't have the same responsibilities, and the, and the laws aren't placed up, uh, uh, against them. So, the, again, these same feminists and these same people who freak out and make demands and act like you can't even spread your legs, you know, in, in public transit, uh, in a in a trolley or you know rail car or whatever you want to call it. These 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 same people are are willing to put your daughters and your people in great danger, and it's not just a theory. The 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 violence, you know, aggression of non consensual, you know, acts against the against women and people. Has been on the. It's it's huge. You can't even have pub, uh, cultural celebrations. You can't even have public, uh, you know, gatherings without these people targeting your children and your daughters. And this is supposed to be the cultural enrichment. This is supposed to be what is beautiful and great and smart. Again, I do love different cultures. I do, you know. Hey, he jokes about it. I do like different food and all this stuff that you know people talk about. But if you don't have a common culture with uh, some core beliefs where we can work together and agree on some, you know, some common principles. You know, if you don't have that, it, societies don't work. These people are not uh, not willing are not e they're not even asked or they're not even invited. It's not even mentioned to them. These people are literally dropped into your communities, dropped onto your soil. Given, uh, again, in America, these types of people and I in people who invade America are given special loans. They're given money. They're given apartments. In these sanctuary cities, they're given jobs. They're given Social Security numbers. They're handed things. I, I live in the uh, a fairly, you know, I live in the southern USA, deep into the quote-unquote Bible Belt, quote-unquote where the rednecks and the Bible thumpers live. And I worked in a warehouse, and they literally faked, and I, and I should report them to the government. They literally faked and, and, and uh, for, with forgery 
the uh, the for for these you know in, invaders from Mexico. They literally gave them you know fake documentation and worked with the government, and it was done by a white person because you know somebody asked them to. They weren't paid extra or paid or in all this. They they did it, and they and they thought that there was nothing really. Ro- and they they knew that they broke the law. I talked to them about it, but they didn't think that there was much of anything wrong about it. The whole the whole place should go down in flames. And just like these sanctuary cities and these types of places, they will net uh, most of these, ex- especially the the really wealthy white people, the actually privileged people. They will live in their gated communities. They will live catered for, and they will never have to even cook their own food. They don't, and they don't even have to have chef's knives in their in their home. That's and, and they will impose that you can not only have measures of, uh, to defend yourself, you can't even have a chef's knife to cook to cook your own food because you are being stabbed by you know quote unquote refugees, you know outside of their gated uh, communities and and their in their rich areas where they keep making it more and more expensive uh, to live with great, bigger taxes. And, and you know, and the house, this housing uh, game and scandal that's going on. Houses are aren't this expensive. It's not that expensive to make houses or build houses. The land isn't that valuable. The you know the things and the labor uh, uh, that's that's there is not that you know does not uh, correlate to the you know to the lifestyle and you know how much people are actually making and how much people are producing. It's it's all a sham. It's all a sham. But let's continue. Wait, they keep telling me diversity's a strength. What could these bigots possibly have against their village suddenly doubling in size, swelled by ranks of new doctors, lawyers, culturally enriched by exotic, tasty new foreign food restaurants? Would have a problem with that. A group of schoolgirls videoed as they were propositioned by a couple of asylum seekers. You know we're 15? Yeah, how old are you? Twenty-one. You know we're 15? Sure. Us. Oh, what, we're 15. She likes me. You're 21 and you're asking Why for a you? snack. We're 15. I'm getting the word nuts. Oh. I, I hope that that made vi- was very clear. That person will not is not going to be put in jail. And that person is not going to be investigated or questioned. In fact, in places like the UK, these, uh, these women uh, putting this out on the Internet might get them put in jail. Because you have exposed uh, and put them uh, these people in a quote unquote bad light, and and that you might have affected the government in a bad way, you know you're the bigot, and and you're the racist for you know being uncomfortable and exposing you know somebody who's targeting your underage daughters. And and the the thing is, I don't want to get too much into the morality of things, but I don't think these daughters take it seriously enough how bad that is or how bad that was. You know, they're happy that they're getting validation and attention. And and that's the thing. These people are so detached from reality and, 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 and how bad these things are. They won't be laughing at the validation and the attention. You know, if it, you know, with the, if they ever experience the consequences of, you know, these types of people and the things that they do. But again, it's not all of them, but it's a major problem. We're going to be talking about that here in a second with culture as well. Don't think that's the kind of cultural enrichment they were anticipating. Look at the size of this village. Linton on Ooze has one shop on the main road. Just four buses run per day. I hope that that makes sense to you. This is literally a one city town. A one city town. I mean a one street town as well. It's one street. All the houses are on one street. Some of you people who live in major cities and bit live in uh, major metropolitan areas, you you can't imagine that you know you're surrounded by forest and woods and animals and bugs and and things and everybody in your whole town lives on one street together. You can't imagine it, and that's happening here. And so, do you think there's that there's jobs? Do you think that there's enough economic entertain uh, enough economic opportunity and entertainment? and shopping and things that these uh, men might want of course these people are not given warning they're not asked if they want this and they don't look at the at the statistics of you know what is best for these people 
you know, best case scenario, you know, these it, it looks like you're. I, I mean, what what do you what are you gonna do? It, best case scenario, you know, all the old quote unquote old white people like Oprah Winfrey die off, and then they get the one you know the housing of one thousand five hundred. What what are the what are the other one thousand five hundred uh, people? "Quote unquote refugees." What are the you know the people out who don't have jobs or any infrastructure or anything? What do you expect? How do you how do you think you know this is a town of one thousand five hundred? Let's say half of the population is uh, women. You know how are those how are those women going to be treated? And and as far as like young women go who might be date or be interested in relationships or, or marriage or anything. I mean how how many how many is in this village? A hundred, two hundred, three hundred, maybe four hundred if you're lucky. I don't know. For three, for three thousand men, no, no, it's, uh, there is no possible way and no rational thinking. If, if even if it was a hundred or two hundred, that would be a major issue. This is double the population. This is complete madness. Madness. Nobody in their right mind can think this is decent or fair or, uh, you know, it, it, that this can work. And these, these kind of, uh, kinds of actions are done by politicians who don't give a damn about your life. They don't give a damn about your life. And in fact, when they do these types of things, they pat themselves on the back, you know, that they reduced racism, that they reduced the whiteness uh, of, you know, an area. You know, that they have enriched society and, you know, the and and you and, and these refugees are probably going to be serving them, you know, coffee in the morning as they go to work, at, you know, at their political cubicle, at their political office, as they get the right little blogs and and little and little dossiers and and and, and legislation and go to fancy meetings and don't even get me uh, on that economic summit. I'll be making a video about that for you, uh, for everybody as well. You know, these people who tell you, you know, how you're going to live. And re and they're, they have every intention and they openly tell you that they're going to regulate the entire world and how you live. This is, this, this is uh, unacceptable. Are you, I mean, are, do, the, are, do the people in the UK accept this type of stuff? Just like in Canada? Are you are, are the people in Canada just going to sit back and accept these terrible things that uh, Trudeau says and does and as he destroys the nation? Calls already wait weeks to get a doctor's appointment. Much like England, Linton on ooze is full. There's just no capacity to take in all these people. There weren't again. There weren't even hotels. They're going to have to build them. And they're going to bring build their hotels for these people on prime farmland. And it's all paid for you, by you, by the taxpayer. You don't, you, you as a person, the government might see some benefits potentially of this. But you as an individual with your community, with your income, with your lifestyle, will never see the benefits of any of this, if there are any. And we'll be talking about that. There are certainly no benefits for these communities for, of the, from this. Yet they plan to bus in migrants who will outnumber the existing residents by nearly three to one pure in... I said twice. It's worse. It's three times is worse. Three times the population. Sanity. And all cooked up without any proper consultation with the local community and just dumped on them. It's supposed to be a democratic society, but nobody's asked us. And now apparently this, they're arriving next week. And this week's... See, see, th these don't pe these people who scream about democracy and fairness and decency, they don't care about that. They don't, and, and they don't care about what works economically. They don't care about you know helping you succeed or become successful. They don't care about fairness. They will, they regulate and destroy our food supply. They destroy our infrastructure. And in America, the supply chain has been completely destroyed. We have no, we have no supply chain. They're making more and more regulations to control and, and destroy truckers as we speak. And I don't know if you know, but with the shortage, there's ETF, I, I believe you, they call it fuel, which is a, an, an additive 
that you, you know, put side by side at there's special systems for truckers. And these special syst systems require this fluid. And if you do not have it, it will shut them down. And if you, so these truckers are literally sometimes stranded in the middle of highways and there's, and, and literally they can't operate because they don't have this fluid, which you, you know, who, who makes this fluid? How, how does this fluid even help? And why are these regulations put in place to begin with? And then they, they, you know, they don't care about the consequences. They don't care about the tr truckers' livelihoods and that them, you know, if imposing those types of regulations, uh, you know, increase cost. They slow down efficiency. They hurt innovation. I mean, what if we wanted to, to make a more effective and more powerful engine? No, 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 no. We go, we go the complete opposite. We make a less efficient in engine that has special systems to require special additives so we quote unquote supposedly help the environment. These people don't care about con the consequences that you will face. I mean, and why I make that point again, we're talking about immigration is because they're they're hurting your lives. They're preventing you from working. They're preventing you from succeeding. They're taxing you to death. As your communities are destroyed, your culture, your families, they don't give a damn about you. These politicians that you keep voting for don't give a damn about you. And you keep voting for them. And you keep allowing them to do these kinds of things to you. Let's continue. This announcement of a successful legal challenge will only put the plan on a temporary hold. Residents have been told by the government they'll get just seven days notice before any migrants arrive. And this isn't just a one-off case. It's the plan for the entire country. Under the Asylum Seeker Dispersal Program, the government has ordered councils to make more council housing stock and private rented accommodation available to house refugees. This at the... I hope that you understand that th these politicians have every intention with the United Nations and these quote-unquote citizens of the world. They don't care about the actual, con again, the consequences, as I mentioned, but the intentions and the desires of these other countries. Foreign countries can have sometimes, it, I mean, they're, they're, they're not having as many kids as they have had in the past. They are decreasing as well. But in some of these foreign countries, on average, they might have as much as six children per family or per man and woman. And they can't economically sustain them. And they see the opportunities in foreign countries so they can ship them off to another country. And then they're called a refugee even if they don't come from a war zone. And where does this idea even come from? What the heck? I mean, again, like with Ukraine, where there might actually be real refugees, you go to neighboring countries. That's the most practical, inefficient thing. Since when do people, ha uh, you know, invite people from all across the world and then it's somehow your moral, moral responsibility as a nation and a citizen to take care of their wants and needs? You know, becoming a, a citizen of, an of another nation is a privilege. You're, you're be becoming a part of the family. There are responsibilities and obligations. But all this is constantly destroyed. And it hurts and it, and it hurts the working men as well. If you're an average man being pushed out of jobs, you know, and you want to, and, and, and you have to, you know, become a low level laborer, work in a warehouse, or, or, or do, you know, work as a low level construction worker, you know, do you think, what, what do you think is happening? This, there's all these people who get preferential treatment on to over you and you, and you can't even get a job for a decent, you know, decent pay. And you're not subsidized like, the, you know, the, these people will be preferred over you, hired before you, and they get special loans and special tax breaks and special aid. And you're sitting back. Now you get paid less for your work. You hardly can't even get a job or you're fired and literally replaced because they have to, you know, for affirmative action uh, or they have to hire these people because of government laws and mandates. You know. And then people wonder why in like Belgium, how overnight, almost overnight, it was like less than a year about the, the nation was completely changed. Uh, the, 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 
the population of Belgium as a whole, but especially a bunch of their, uh, many of their cities were, you know, there used to be Belgian people there, but they were completely replaced. They either left and ran away or they were just, you know, they were, they were, re were re removed. You people act like that. You don't want to acknowledge that this kind of stuff is exist, exists. And you don't also don't want to acknowledge that these people, many of them don't care about your nation and don't care about your people. They have no intention of understanding or caring or working with you. Again, not all of them, but some of them literally believe and are, are actively trying to commit jihad. But we are, you know, you are the crazy person. And there's something wrong with you if you even acknowledge any of these things. Let's continue. At the same time that Britain faces a severe housing shortage crisis with skyrocketing prices and limited supply making home ownership unaffordable for many. With endless sprawling housing estates being built on the edge of villages and green belt land that's supposed to be protected. So again, green belt land. So when you, whenever you're a farming community and the government steals that land from you, that you have to live upon, that you de you depend on for generations of, uh, for to produce your food and and food for the community. That doesn't matter. They steal that land from you, or it's it's allowed th that you're allowed to farm it. You know, it's the government's land, but you essentially have like a lease or a permission to farm on it. Now that kind of stuff is taken away from a rural community. Do you understand how severe or how bad of that is for a small rural community who, 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 who depends on that? I mean, even if the refugees weren't a factor, taking that farmland, you know, could send people into poverty, could have people lose their homes. It could have people literally have to eat less, literally not be able to have, you know, a child, have a child or have a family. This is, the, this is the diversity they speak of. This is the cultural enrichment that you are supposed to celebrate. This is supposed to be beautiful. And again, as he says, there's a housing shortage. There's not enough houses around to begin with. And yet now you're going to take the, uh, you know, take farmland, valuable farmland, and to, to, to build homes for you know, for, you know, these foreign people who are not, uh, who are actually not refugees. These politicians are mad. Uh, and it's worse than that. These politicians are evil. Placing further onerous strain on already creaking NHS infrastructure and other public services. Meanwhile, at a cost to the taxpayer of five million quid a day. The government is paying for these migrants to be housed in 30,000 hotel rooms. A I hope you understand this as well. This happened in New York. And why I make comparisons with America is because they did the exact type of thing. And they, they, they don't even use cheap hotels. They'll use fa not even fairly high end. They were high end New York hotels. That the average American can't even afford. And they housed them and they wrecked the place and they ran off the people who actually would use the hotel, you, you know, normally. A and and they run off their tourists and their and the and the customers and, and, and ruin the and, and, and destroy the nation. These people don't care about your you know your in, in your lives your infrastructure they they don't care about the consequences of their actions if you complain and if you open your mouth you know you're just the privileged person you're just you you i mean you're the bigot the rich politician the fat cats in all in, in the offices have the audacity to uh you know tell you the average person who can't even afford rent who, you know, who can't, isn't even allowed to own a family farmland. Somebody who, you know, has a little, a little to nothing. That is your responsibility, you know, to help and aid and accept the crimes, accept the violence, accept the culture. 
And again, if you speak out against these things, there are many times in the UK where you can get thrown in jail. If you've spoke up against the coup and the mandates and the, and the totalitarian control of these governments, UK will put you in jail. They, they, they throw people in jail for having pocket base, uh, like old old style, old world pocket knives that uh, if, if they're just a little bit too long. You know, they're old fashioned pocket knives, but if they're just a little bit too long, you know, you, you'll get thrown in jail. But these people are, you know, these immigrants are, don't obey your laws. They're going to be, they, they, they are going to be, and they do commit all kinds of violence. Do you think the people in the UK have, uh, you know, boomsticks and pew pews and, and ways to defend themselves? No, they don't. Just suggesting that you would defend your home, defend your wife, defend your daughter, you know, speak out uh, so your son can possibly have a job. You know, you're the problem. You're the problem, according to your politicians. On the seafront in Eastbourne, this hotel would normally be home to some of the many tourists who visit this East Sussex resort. But these guests are not holidaymakers. They're asylum seekers. Some of the tens of thousands who are currently placed in hotel accommodation. And the authorities seem alarmingly paranoid about news reporters speaking to any of them. As we filmed, this home office minder filmed us. Another tried to persuade the guests to go back inside. And as I tried to speak to some of them, I was told I couldn't. They're not allowed to speak. They are guests. Well, they are allowed to speak. <laughs> no, they can't give any, any statement to you. That's official. You're telling us on behalf know, of the Home Office that these people are not allowed to speak to us. Is that what you're telling us? Meanwhile, I hope you understand how big of an issue that is as well. So they literally hide them at first from the public eye. Any and all bad actions that these people that they try to do, they protect them, protect these people as if they're newborn babies and that they they can, that they can do no wrong. They, they can destroy your property, violate your daughters and your wives. They can steal your jobs. They, they can make demands. They can act like they are the minority and expect privileges and, and, and you know programs and money and support. But you can't even talk to them. You know, you're not even allowed to talk to them as you are a citizen of your own nation. If you try to film them and discuss something, you will be filmed and you will be reported and you are the problem. Do you, do you see how, 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 ba how bad this is? This is almost unimaginable. This is something you could make a horror movie out of. If this is not worrying or a threat to you, there's nothing that's a threat to you. If this isn't a danger to you, Nothing will ever be a danger to you. If you think that you would just accept a, 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 an occasional theft or an occasional violence, I've talked to these kinds of people. They call themselves bleeding hearts and they wear it like a badge of honor on their shoulders. They're proud of it. And yet they have had things stolen from them in public. And, they, and they've been surrounded and, and almost targeted. And they back down and these men act wimpy and capitulate and demasculate themselves. And if they didn't, they'd be attacked by gangs. And yet they're still proud. You know, they're proud to, uh, quote unquote, believe in diversity and be a, a global citizen. Let's continue. Our own homeless population is left to shiver on the streets. The majority of people sleeping rough in England are from the UK. No free hotel rooms for them. They'd be better treated if they hopped on a dinghy from France and came back pretending to be asylum seekers. Most of these migrant hotels are now completely closed to the public because whenever they try to maintain parts of the hotels for use by tourists and other parts for use by migrants, like in Scarborough, let's just say the behavior of the migrants makes the hotel's TripAdvisor and Booking.com review scores plummet faster than a skydiver who forgot his parachute. One Sudanese migrant at a hotel in Glasgow expressed his gratitude by going on a stabbing spree. And no, that and I want to, you know, bring this up, and he makes this point as well, is because, again, you, you're not allowed to speak to these refugees. You're not allowed to influence them. 
because these refugees are going to be the leftist modern liberals of the future. These people are blank canvases that they will mold. You know, maybe this generation, the, the government doesn't think that, you know, maybe this generation will be uh, difficult to work with. But the children of these refugees will be dependent on the government and see the government as their father or as their mother and as the person who, you know, who helped them. Not your communities, not you who served them, not you as a citizen of that nation who capitulated and sacrificed and suffered and had things stolen from you and violence done upon you. The, 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 the children of these refugees and the refugees in the future will look as the government to, to, as their, not only as the person who helped them, but as the opportunity to gain power and influence and you know, make further demands and you know, gain power over you. And the politicians know that the, they can mold or use these types of people in the future. They, th they think it's their moral obligation. Again, a lot of these Western nations with, the, with their obsession with diversity, with, uh, with that we have to, quote unquote, sacrifice ourselves like a modern, uh, a, a martyr, that, that we have to sacrifice all of our nations. I'm not sure exactly where this stems from. But it must stem from these people being obsessed and reading all of these articles about, you know, the quote unquote imperialism and the violence and the things that were done. Yes, France has, has done wars and especially the UK and Britain has in the, in the past was very imperial imperialistic. But you but but they're, they're not this is not how you give reprimand uh, reparations. This is not how you. Uh, you know, try to build up a relationship with the with the countries that you have offended, like and done wrongs to, like India and and, and Africa and like New Guinea and, and things like this. This is not how you heal wounds, and how you make things right. And I don't think that this that that's even the intention. We know with Germany that they did have some of that attitude behind what they were doing. But most of these nations don't. I mean, France did some, you know, had some wars like way in the past. But in general, Fra you know, France, I mean, they've financially, uh, you know, taken control of, you know, some of the mining and, and, and bought some of the mining like in South Africa. But besides that, they did, didn't do that much. The, the damage is, I, I, I make this point and I, and I make this point very straightforward to you is because, it, you know, I'm, I, I focus on this so much here, is because this refugee influx is, go, is doing and will do just as much damage as any war did. You know, it would be an act of war if you sent hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people in your nation who had no intention of assimilating, who were committing violence, who were uh, making demands, who wanted your jobs and your infrastructure, who were violating your mothers and, and sisters and daughters. That would, be an, uh, that, that, that would be a huge act of war. That would be a huge act of war. And that, ha that is a measure of war. Again, a lot of people think that war or, or conflicts are, you know, are just vi uh, you know, vi done by violence. They can be done by demographics as well. You, you can conquer a nation, you know, through biology or through information like thoughts or, or through bodily harm and, and damages as well. There's, mul there's multiple ways to, to take over, uh, you know, as they say. So when, when, in, the f in the future, when UK, the K UK doesn't look like UK and the France doesn't look like France and Belgium already doesn't look like Belgium, and Germany doesn't look like Germany, and all these countries are taken over. Is is that enough? Has has the West capitulated enough? Have they sacrificed enough? China con conquered most of the world at one point. So did Egypt. When will they have to capitulate? When will they have to atone for their sins as a nation? When? You know, when will these uh, the, the, you know they, them as a nation have to suffer? And why is it that, all, you know, these people get to completely take over the land, these lands and these people? You know, if you as an American or somebody try to go to a foreign nation 
and demand aid, demand support, housing, lifestyle, and you were committing crimes in a foreign nation, do you think that would be tolerated? What if I as a white man went to Africa and went to some a, a tribe, you know, an African tribe, and we and there were, you know, for every, you know, every person African there, there were three white people. And we said that now you have to support us. Now you're going to build housing for us, paid by your tax dollars, on your fer most fertile, rich sand, even sacred land. And and we were commit and and then they were you know these people, so what if they started committing crimes against the African people as well, and violating their women and all of this? And you were and and. You can't even imagine something like that. That's unimaginable. And then what if what if the African people were told that they're supposed to accept it, that they're criminals or that there's something wrong with them if they even speak out against it, even if they express their pain, even if they show you tears, that there is something wrong with them and that they might even need to see a psychologist. That is what is happening to the quote-unquote West. That is what's happening in the UK here. And these people aren't stopping or they, they want even more and more refugees. If They're not even refugees. It's a lie. And again, these types of people have also taken over religions. They have the audacity to give speeches like Jesus was a refugee. The, you know, again, they, they, these people are not going to stop. You have to you have to do something about this. You have to speak out. You have to do something because if you don't, you know, this is coming for you. This is coming for you real soon. That doesn't mean all migrants are out to do harm, and I don't blame them for wanting to come here, but it only takes a small percentage of a large number to cause significant trouble. The problem is that 90 percent of those that cross the English Channel are male. They are coming from cultures, uh, in most cases, in which women aren't even treated as second-class citizens. Um, and that leads to fear and terror where the people are put. In I hope that you understand what was done there. In, in, in order to speak about these troubles, this man, who's very articulate and well-spoken, has to capitulate and speak about, you know, in the interest of women. Because if you speak in the interest of men, you as a man are disposable. You're an object. You are everything that the, the, the feminists scream that, you know, that the wrongs that are done to them, all those wrongs are done to men and more. These, you know, and also, they, 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 they just don't care to, you know, understand the... the consequences of these things let's go back and watch that here again real quick because i want to i want y'all to understand what he's what he's really saying there aren't even treated as second class citizens um, and that leads to fear and terror where the people are put in Lins so he had to also capitulate and water it down and weaken the argument because literal violence literal violations the four letter words are being done to women by these refugees and they hide the crimes and they hide the violence and they hide these actions and your daughters aren't being warned or protected they're not being taught differently in fact germany made pamphlets you know encouraging the refugees to date and target german women and the german women were also taught to accept them ordered to commanded to Do you think this is healthy? Do you think that this is normal? Who, who who thinks this is normal? Who thinks this is good? These these politicians have far too much power, and they're not being held accountable for their actions. Again, the types of people in their cities, the wealthy people, the people who don't even have to cook for themselves, the people who don't have to do much of anything, and they have cushy lives and privileges, the hearts of these cities where you can see them walking around, you know, going to little plazas and they shop all day and they eat fine food all day. 
They will ne- they probably will never have to experience any of these pains. You don't see them shipping these people into the heart of rich, affluent cities. You don't. Because they would not tolerate this. You don't see them, you know, shipping, you know, or a lot sending or shipping the invaders of America and these illegals to Hollywood. No, 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 no. <laughs> they don't do that. <laughs> they certainly don't do that. And there's a reason for that. Because they want to replace you. The people who are hardworking and responsible, the people who are quote unquote, you know, American or quote unquote freedom minded, the hardworking people, the the people who work to, you know, keep, uh, su- you know, sustain society, the people who are, you know, responsible, the people who are practical. You are just useful. You are replaceable. And they are replacing you because you are too much of a threat. You know, you're too smart for your own good. And you might oppose their, you know, agendas to have complete control through technology. You know, you, you might you might fight back. You might understand what they're doing. You might you you, you know, you, you might say something. You might become a politician and oppose them and fight them. They can't have any of that. They are going to replace you. You know, this is how they take over a democracy without violence. They don't have to, you know, they don't have to use weapons. They don't have to pull a trigger. They can, you know, remove you and replace you with refugees. I hope that that is very clear. And again, I I am not heartless. Some people, some if you're watching this video, you might say that I am a monster or something. I care about people. I sincerely do. But for you who would criticize me, what about the millions of dollars of hard-earned money that have been donated to these countries? Millions of dollars, millions of tax dollars, millions of personal donations. We also have given our technology technologies we've given equipment we've given plumbing we've given water we've given electricity we've given books we've given information we have built many great things and given the given it to them and yet somehow yet somehow we're still in the wrong i know many people again who have given their hard-earned money who are poor they're not rich they are poor. They're not even middle class. And they've given money to foreign causes. You know, whenever there's an outbreak or something bad happened, like, you know, some some disease happened in, in Africa or, or some flood or some an, a tsunami or, or, or anything. These people were donating their hard earned money. Yeah, I don't get the debates about charity and the. The very little of that money it goes to charity. I, I I know, it's it's a racket. But what about this? What about the soup drives? How many you know millions of cans of food have been given and shipped to these types of people? Millions of cans of food. How much does the West? How much does America? How much do these nations have to do before you know we even get a small thank you? An ounce of gratitude, or some recognition for what we have done. By the looks of it, you will be replaced, and that, and they will still not be happy, and you will, ne- and, and they, in the, the, the records of history, will say that white people really never did that much. White people were never really kind, quote unquote, white people or Western people or or these people who had these beliefs. Never, never sacrificed, never were charitable, never loved, never gave. When again, some people make out that America is a, the most selfish nation. America is the most charitable nation with their donations than any other nation. They give the most money and the aid to other people. And we have sacrificed our infrastructure, our manufacturing to other nations to build them up. And we have weakened our nation. At what, at what point do we look at our so, own self-interest and our own basic survival? 
so many people in uh, in America and the, and again these rich liberal types, these people who are raised in col- in colleges and have never seen real life, have never experienced anything in real life, these city type people, they will never have to experience these types of struggles. They will never have to experience what you have experienced if you live outside of these big cities or these big metropolitan areas outside of these you know these rich areas i talked to some people and to me i you know i was graduating college and i never was able to get a job out of college and don't act like i'm privileged because i went through college i paid for it with my hard earned money blood sweat and tears and you know there were no jobs for me affirmative action had put priority to to women to transgenders and to all kinds of quote unquote other minority groups. Even when I tried to work for, you know, outside of my own college degree, where I tried to work, uh, you know, for, you know, like online support for like trucking, co- trucking companies and, and other things in, in regards to my, you know, degree with l- like logistics and scheduling and things. I still couldn't even get a job, even for even for that, even if I, as I looked for the most desperate of jobs. And about the best I could do were jobs that didn't even should do, really don't and never should require a college degree, like becoming a car salesman. I hope that you understand that these people don't care about you. They don't. And these politicians don't care about you and they don't serve you, and they do not represent your own self-interest. And it's about time that you, you know, stop voting for the feel-good type things and hold these politicians accountable. This is not, a, this is not acceptable. How much do, again, how much do the people have to suffer? Or quote-unquote white people have to suffer? Let's continue. Internal news on Eastbourne Seafront in Windsor or wherever it is. And how did we end up here? Because under a conservative government that promised to drastically reduce both legal and illegal immigration, our border has more holes in it than a giant block of Swiss cheese. Last year alone, nearly 30,000 refugees arrived on boats on UK shores, where they were immediately given a complimentary taxi service and free accommodation by our border force. And those numbers are only set to increase. Hundreds more arrived in the past week. Nigel Farage warns 100,000 could arrive by the end of this year. The government has vowed to send a small number to Rwanda and even if they get past all the lefty legal challenges preventing them from doing so, that's a drop in the ocean. There have been 4,850 landings since the Rwanda plan was announced back in April. 200 more boat migrants arrived on Tuesday alone because there's no deterrent only incentive both for illegal economic migrants and the people smugglers making a killing out of the entire racket many of them just rock up on the beach and run to the nearest town or village nobody has a clue who they even are instead of escorting the boats back to france where they came from We treat their occupants like celebrities arriving at the Ritz. And these aren't Ukrainian housewives. They're almost entirely young men from countries like Iran, Iraq and Afghanistan that aren't even at war. They're economic migrants. I'm going to wrap this up here because he has some more good points to say. I encourage you to watch his whole video. And Paul Joseph Watson, fantastic YouTuber, doing a great job. But he brings up that issue about the Ukrainian housewives. They were they were men who were looking for and to marry and you know to to uh, you know have relationships with Ukrainian women as they escaped Ukraine. And there were feminist women who acted like these men were predatory and that there were some there was something wrong with them, and that they actually attacked Ukrainian the Ukrainian women who actually were looking for what to, to be married or for husbands, you know, but it, not only were they in, de- they in desperate situations, they, you know, they had it, you know, ha- might have to adjust their lifestyle and it might be better for them to try to find a husband in a different nation because they don't want to go back to the Ukraine and, the, and, and, and situations like that. 
And what did the feminists do? The feminists not only attacked the men who would who would want to look for a Ukrainian wife, they they also attacked the Ukrainian women as well. And yet these people will never speak and never say anything about these quote unquote refugees. They will never say a certain uh, anything. They will never criticize them. And your government is funded to protect and to aid and to serve. And as you can see, these people, they're, they're protecting them. They're helping them. You get shipped into the country. My friends, you as men must, again, the MGTOW people can go their own way and they, you can do whatever the heck you want. But I'm not willing to go down without a fight. And more and more people might respect men or see men uh, in their own nations. And maybe we wouldn't lose if men actually spoke out against these things. Yes, people would hate you. Yes, they on national news, they would defame you and mock you and call you all the ists and the isms that they would like to. Yes, they would get on their blogs. Yes, Twitter would freak out if more men were vocal about these types of things and spoke out. But I'm telling you that if you care about your nation or care about your fa a family or a legacy or anything, that everything is about to be stolen from you. If you have any type of inheritance, if you believe in any type of lifestyle or culture, if you, if you believe in any of this, all of that will be and can be sacrificed for the collectivism that's coming. And I hope that you look into what that is. Because we have a very twisted form of Marxism that has, has affected our colleges for decades. And essentially, many of our political leaders are, you know, quote unquote progressives or quote unquote Marxist. They don't care about you. You are an object. You are something that is moldable and shapeable and replaceable. And, and you are there to serve the collective good. That's how these politicians think. They think that they're smarter than you and better than you. And soon enough, they will also, and they already are programming artificial intelligence to give them decisions, which will, you know, quote unquote, be for the best good you know if if they believe and and the lies and can program artificial intelligence to 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 suggest that uh you know b based on incorrect beliefs like you know white people are inherently more violent or white men and things like this what do you think that their artificial intelligence is going to tell them to do reduce the number of white men in your nation and, and, and change these demographics and do these cut types of actions. Again, these people are emotionally minded, our politicians and these stupid people who vote and encourage and turn a blind eye to these types of things. They're stupid and they're emotional. But also, I'll make a whole video about artificial intelligence. How many of these politicians even make decisions for themselves? Who's pulling the strings? with the United Nation, with the international bankers. Who is really pulling the strings? Is, is artificial intelligence, you know, telling them what to do? And are they basing all of their de decisions on artificial intelligence? I think you as a person need to, you know, especially as a man, need to be sp uh, speak out. Again, you might not care about culture or civilization. You might have no love for your own nation. But you should at least care about, you know, your job. You might not even care about your local community. Maybe you don't even have much of a family. Again, many of you uh, are, are good men and you have been pushed out of your even your local communities. Your, the government hates you. Hollywood hates you. Media, movies and society. And that is why you go your own way. And I, I understand that completely. But if you do have sons or daughters or children or anything... You know, you're not leaving a better world for them and you're not really fighting for a better world if you just go your own way. That's one reason I, you know, I acknowledge some of the good of the quote unquote big towel. But again, I'm also criticizing them because a lot of you men who have been wronged, including myself, the good men, 
who have been wrong, wronged and who have been outcasted, if you don't at least try, if you don't at least try to get the word out, you know, then you're capitulating to these types of people. They don't care about you. They don't love you. They're not really, they're not going to work with you. They're not going to represent you. They're going to lie to you. And again, this was, a lot of these actions were done by politicians who promised to control the immigration, control the refugees, that they were going to limit or reduce or stop it. Imagine what's being done by, you know, nations and politicians who actually believe that we need more of this. There's still people out there who will scream at you and tell you that diversity is our strength. Clearly, diversity for the sake of, you know, cultural and, you know, racial diversity clearly doesn't help anybody. Diversity of thought, diversity, you know, can be beautiful and can support each other again. And that's what's why I encourage you men to do. You know, they, these, they will, you know, again, as much as the, again, I don't hate the refugees as much as some of them are dangerous. Some of them are uh, organizing and are factions and are part of, you know, jihad. Some of them are, there's no dis dispute about that. But they are also are victims in a different way. And that's also what I wanted to uh, talk about in closing here with you. These people, also, again, I talked about them being moldable and that they will be used and or their children will be used, you know, to undermine and reform and weaken nations and, you know, stop generational wealth, remove powerful families, uh, you know, businesses that have been owned by, you know, a certain family for generations. You know, the Rockefellers can do the, that kind of thing where they can have a business that's uh, and, and uh, like Heinz Ketchup Company, things like that. Coca-Cola, they can have generations of power, but you can't. You're not allowed to do that. You're just a common person. You're just an average person. So I invite you that if there is a way, if, 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 if there is a possible way, again, be safe, be careful. But try to re reach out to these refugees. I have tried to talk to some of them. And some of them have been extremely threatening and extremely violent to me. But if you can try to help these people understand the situation that they are in and, the, and, and how they are being used, many of them don't care. It's a new opportunity for them. They're going to take advantage of the situation. They don't care that they're hurting your family and your friends your, and your community. And again, that's, that's, that, that's the sad thing about all of this. Again, they, these diversity type people try to wrap this all up in love. That you need to love. That you need to capitulate. That you need to sacrifice. You need to give. Give, give, give. These type of refugee type people do not care. These types of people celebrate at, celebrated as Notre Dame was burning. One of the most important cultural and historical, historically significant structures and buildings for France, and that has, and uh, really ha that has ever existed in human history. And they celebrated it burning because they want to see the destruction of the West. Some of them do. I hope that you understand that what kind of world we live in. And you as a man, even if you don't want to help these people or educate them or make those types of efforts, I hope that you will organize and work with your friends and community and those who you can depend upon and those who would work with you and work with them to have, you know, at least some measure of protection, some measure of organization. If there is an emergency, if there is violence committed against you and your friends, that you have some way to defend your friends and that your family and some, you know, a few people in your community. Because, again, they want to act like you're isolated and they want to isolate you and they want you to feel, you know, lost. And that's one reason they control your speech and your organizations. 
and, and, and your groups and all these things and they take over everything that's social is because there is power in numbers and organizations and speech and narratives. You just can't be silent and you can't just, and separating yourself from people doesn't give you power and it doesn't give you opportunity. So again, men, I encourage you to speak out against these types of things. I do think that, you know, as a person, that we should try to help build up the world. I do think that we, sh we should care and that if you saw somebody in a, you know, less ad advantageous situation, if you essentially were quote unquote privileged, I think that, you know, it would be a good thing to help other people. But you don't, there's no, uh, you're, you're not obligated to. There's no governmental regulation. These kinds of things must not be and cannot be enforced. Charity is optional. And those who are charitable, it's a virtue. As you can see, no matter how much you give, no matter how, mu how much you capitulate, even if you're poor, that's not good enough. Nothing is ever good enough for the politicians and the power-hungry people and, the, and then the, 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 the pawns these refugees, you know, they're not going to be satisfied, you know, even if you give them everything that you have. In a little town of 1,500 people, when they outnumber you three to one, they're not going to they're not going to say sorry. Whenever one of your daughters are violated or your sister or your wife, they will not say sorry. And in fact, if you if you talk about it on the internet, the the government in the UK will throw you in jail. Um, I I I think that you must you know we're we're getting to a point, and maybe it's long overdue that you you should do more, you should do much more than just speak out. These politicians should not be allowed to do this. This is not tolerable. This is not acceptable. This is the kind of stuff that led to the American Revolution. Not only did they regulate and prevent and stop you from getting certain goods or services, they limited you owning, you know, the British in the UK limited, limited and prevented America from, from having, the, you know, tools and weapons uh, to defend and fight, you know, with. They taxed. They imposed, you know, what they could do with their property and they put soldiers in their homes and houses. They essentially controlled their property. They controlled their lives. And that's one reason we talk about life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. They controlled what they could do, how they could live. And, you know, and, and, and you know, commerce. What you could buy, what you could sell, what you can say, what you can do. And assert, essentially think. So don't don't let this uh, don't let this get away, please don't, please don't let this get away, don't be silent, don't capitulate, don't allow yourself to be browbeaten or beaten down by people who scream and yell and demand of you, the feminist and these types of people who are the privileged. These are you know feminists are the privileged. There there are literally situations where. They are shipping, you know, people who have committed great acts of violence back to their original country. And the feminist will try to fight for these people. You know, these people, these, these feminist type people, you know, they're just as much of the problem as anybody else. And they are a part of, and, and you think that they wouldn't be connected to this very much, but they are. They're directly connected and correlated to this. Funny enough, they are. It's because feminists also know, and we talk about feminists on this channel, because again, MGTOW is not a reaction to feminism, but that's a part of trying to escape feminism. MGTOW, again, I'm not ex essentially MGTOW, but the movement or the people in MGTOW are about going their own way and escaping but what are you going to escape to or escape from when you don't have jobs, can't get jobs, you're taxed, you're regulated, and you're targeted, and you are disposed of? Because just like women know, 
that they can find different dating opportunities and that they, they can use foreign men. If you're too smart, if you won't give in, if you won't, if you won't do what they want you to do, they can simply replace you. I hope that makes sense because feminists are doing this with your, with your men and the men of America and the men of these foreign countries. The feminists are happy to replace and destroy white men. Because to them, white men are the root of all evil. White men are the worst thing that ever happened to the world to these types of people. But white men are the ones who built and created and made the world a far better place for all races, for all people, for all nations, all history. White men have done more for the world than any, that, that, in, you know, as a collective or, or as a group of people. White, you know, white men, especially of America, have done more for the world than any other nation, any other place, any other people in world history of humanity. And that's why they speak out and freak out and, and try to take away from them because of the power and, and the success and the achievements and the intelligence that, these, that white men did have had. And I am no supremacist at all. You look at people's, the quality of their character and their intelligence and their, and their success and the things that they have done. That is how you measure people, not by their skin color. But there have been com common core qualities of these types of people in America of freedom and justice and accountability and merit that have created the, you know, the greatest economies and the greatest technologies and, and, the, and the biggest successes and the best inventions and the best technology that the world has ever seen. But they don't care about any of that. If these people have their way, they will make you they will make these nations poorer and weaker. I don't even hear people talk about technology anymore. I don't hear people talk about science. I don't talk hear people talking about space shuttles to the moon go or going to Mars. I don't even hear people talk about these things anymore. I guess those kinds of things really don't matter, do they? If we can perpetually, you know, if, if the political elite and the bankers and the, and the, and the, and the globalist can keep a, essentially a slave race, I guess that's all that matters because they're going to be happy and they're going to have power forever. I guess that's what matters to them. But I hope that you will encourage humanity to speak up and to rise against these types of people. To rise up against these types of organizations and these politicians. You should never tolerate these types of things. You should never accept them. You should never tolerate them. And I don't know why we are tolerating it. Is there not an ounce of decency? An ounce of freedom? An ounce you know, an ounce of honor, you know, and we're not even, I'm not even talking about principles about loyalty to family or loyalty to country or anything really, even there. I mean, where, where are the men who are willing to fight for their freedom? I don't see much of any of you. I don't see polit many politicians, if any politicians, even speak about these kinds of things. I don't see politicians and people talking about taxes and how taxes are a theft from you. It, tax, taxes are a way of controlling you and taking from you, and it's a p form of punishment, and it can be a form of regulation as well. The governments are far too powerful, and even if their powers were far reduced... Governments should be weak in general. Even if the governments were weak, they're still doing things that are completely incorrect. I hope that you understand and talk about these things. I'll wrap up, leave this video here uh, to you today. This is something that's near and dear to my heart because I live in a rural place, in a poor place, where there's very few jobs. And I, and I was one of those people who 
couldn't get a job, who begged for jobs, who did everything possible. And then I quit things like LinkedIn. And uh, not too long afterwards, LinkedIn actually started, you know, showing advertisements, promoting single mothers and the quote unquote minorities. And I learned that all of these organizations and everything that I had tried to do and these colleges and everything, you know, I tried to lie to myself and act like, you know, these people did not hate me or didn't want to outcast me, but they did. They do. And it's hard to accept that. It's hard to accept that you tried to serve and aid and help and that nothing you did mattered to them. They were never grateful. They never cared. They would never say thank you. They simply don't care about you as a white, you know, as a white man or just a, you know, a strong man who believes in your own country. Doesn't matter if you're French, doesn't matter if you're German, Italian, Spanish, any of these countries. It doesn't matter how good you are. They don't care about you. And they're not going to care about you. And um, these politicians and these types of people. So I hope that you start talking about that. Because we still assume that our communities and that our people, and in some cases our own mothers are against us. But we still assume that our local communities have our best interests at heart that our politicians, you know, are attempting to keep their promises. We assume that, you know, other people have the best intentions at heart. And they don't. Your goodwill, your good efforts, your service, your love, your compassion, your understanding, your intelligence, it will, is, and will be used against you. You know, men can no longer afford, you can no longer afford to be, you know, possibly, you know, kind or compassionate. You have to focus on your own individual survival. That's a sad world. It's kind of a privilege in a way to be compassionate. And you as a, you know, you know, you no longer have that, you know, available to you. You can no longer afford to be compassionate to the, to the people who openly hate you, who openly take and destroy from you in your life. You can't be compassionate to your enemies. And you didn't even want them to be enemy. They made themselves to be an enemy against you. They are the ones who targeted you. They are the ones who c did violence and, uh, against you. And yes, taxes are violence. Hope that you understand that. So my friends, you as a man, figure out how you can, you know, have a good job or have a good career or figure out a way that you can survive because these people, you know, don't care about you and they're not going to care about you. They never, they never will. You can sit back and try to, try to hope. If you actually want to make change, you're going to have to be a politician or you're going to have to actually, you know, try to influence people. You can't just sit back and hope that people will recognize all the pain and all the hurt that you've, you that you have and will experience. Why, you know, again, I love all people. And black people also have been through terrible things. They used to be given the quote there used to be something that was was called the talk. That is as a as a young black man was going out into the world, you know, driving a car or walking on the streets, they would be told to be careful about the threats that would happen to them, about the threats that, uh, uh, from the police, how they might be targeted, how, how they, you know, might be stopped by a cop to question them, you know, just stop them and, they, and, and the cop had no legal right or justification to stop, you know, stop the vehicle. And you could, and you were taught to not argue, to say yes. If they give you a, uh, gave you a ticket, or or told you something, even if they were completely wrong, you just said yes, yes sir, no sir, and you accepted that ticket, or you you did what they told you to do. 
um, if you are a father out there, I know that most families don't have fathers in the household, that most fathers are being kicked out of their homes, but you need to be, you know, if you are a white man or, or just a man in general who believes in freedom, you need to be having a serious talk with your son as well. And that's one, re that's one way that you can possibly fix these problems. Because your sons are going to college and public schools and high schools and they're being indoctrinated against you and to accept these types of things. And, you know, to accept these types of violence and but these things against them. And against their sisters and against society. So... I did give you some advice. I did give you some ways you can fix this, but this is a difficult situation. And many of, you, of your communities and your societies and cities will not survive this. You will, they will be completely changed. People will have, th theft will come upon you. Crimes will come upon you. Things will be done to your wives and your sisters and your daughters. And, um, and I can't do anything to save them. I wish I could. I wish I could save them, but I can only be here and, and share wisdom with you and tell you to be aware. You know, again, earlier in this video, we watched these two girls were targeted who are 15 by an older, quote unquote, sub, quote unquote, refugee man. Was he working? No, he was in the street. You know, he might even try to, you know, try to be a pimp. You know, they laughed about it. They thought it was funny. They don't know what kind of danger they're in. They don't know what kind of danger they're in. It's no, this is no laughing matter. This is not cute. And this is not funny. Men, I hope that you'll speak out. I hope that you'll speak up. You might get kicked off of Twitter. Who cares? You might get kicked off of some platform. Who cares? It's, uh, it's time that you at least tried. I don't see enough of you men trying, trying to help, trying to speak out, and trying to do something about the, any of these things. I don't see you writing politicians. I don't see you arguing with politicians. I don't see you men doing much of anything. Again, going your own way and finding your peace and all that is wonderful. You know, avoiding marriage because of these, the mar these marriage laws are evil against you and, you know, they're dangerous against you. All that kind of stuff. Some of the, again, some of the MGTOW stuff does share good messages. Some of the, some of it is. But again, you men got to do something. Or all is lost, essentially. <laughs> you know, the basic principles of the Constitution with freedom and liberty and justice and, and, uh, you know, checks and balances and fairness and the Electoral College. These types of things, they're all going to be lost. It's all going to be removed. And these types of people will never bother to even put it in a, in a history book. They'll just, you know, they'll, they don't care about it. They think that the American form of government is a failure or is not effective enough or doesn't allow them to do enough. It doesn't, the politicians, that they don't think that they have enough power. They don't like the checks and balances. They've already broken the, in America, they've already broken our legal system. The electoral college has far, new, far too, too much power, and they've broken all kinds of laws and, and regulations and how the system is supposed to work in the first place as well. Again, they're not going to stop. I hope that you men start, at least start to start, you know, start doing something because... It's not going to get any better. I can tell you that. Well, my friends, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share the video for more videos. Again, shout out to Paul Joseph Watson for his wonderful content. And I'll see you soon, my friends. Peace out and bye.